Good afternoon. Fall is here. The nights and morning are getting cooler. I want to say it was like 48 this morning. So yeah, the few weeks of fall uh, in the Central Valley uh, is appreciated by the trees just because of the cooler weather. Um, gives them a chance to kind of not stress out so much about uh, trying to stay alive because of the heat, <laughs> the dry heat. So today I want to talk about um, one of the benefits of growing tropical fruit trees in the Central Valley is just the availability of year-round fruit. So store fruit, okay? Look, it is flowering middle of October, flowering and fruiting. Yeah, look. Fruiting. That's amazing. And again, middle of October. And, I mean, did I mention flowering? So yeah, year-round fruits. Uh, the guavas. So what guavas? Just because I've, I've, I enjoy guava so much, I've got like a bunch of different varieties. A and I've got them staggered in the sense that I have different varieties that produce fruit in different um, parts of the year. So I I've noticed the, the Asian varieties like the Taiwanese here, they, they like to hold on to the fruits until winter. So that's why I've got them here. Whereas the Ruby Supreme here, classic guava uh, taste, um, generally like right around now, that's when most of the fruits fall to the ground or get picked. So yeah, and I mean, of course, like the, the Red Malaysian, you know, all gone except these two. And then, um, <laughs> The Thai variety, again, Asian variety, I don't know. Look at them. Big old softball size. And, and you want to know something cool about this particular year? All right. Don't sue me, Disney. It's a Mickey Mouse Guava. Isn't that a, a very nice mutant Guava fruit? Two of them. <laughs> Mickey and Minnie. <laughs> Isn't that awesome? Three in one. So now I, I know why we call it fall. Because obviously all the fruit's on the ground. That's got to be why we call it fall. Uh, but yeah, no, right around this time, that's when uh, the jujubes are like just super ripe and fall. Even the, uh, even the uh, mangoes here, this is how you know it's ready to be picked. It, it literally just fell from the, the tree. Another one up here. Watch, I'm just gonna hold on to it and it's gonna just kind of fall apart. Yeah, I mean it's middle of uh, October and yet there's still mangoes uh, ripening. Uh, including unripe ones, um, yeah. Now, speaking of mangoes unripening, yeah, I kind of neglected the coriander a bit. Um, oh boy, this is what I mean by neglected. Um, and good thing I did, because, look! This is, uh, this is how you know it's right when it fell from the tree. I think that's it. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, there's uh, you know, there's one more here. Uh, actually, a few more actually. And then <laughs> GA six six GJB. Yeah, I've got to take the time to um pick these. So now, if you notice the leaf, in response to the cooler temperature, it is it, it's going. Uh, deciduous. It, it's gonna, in the next couple of weeks, all the leaves will sh uh, fall from the tree and become a piece of stick. 
Uh, and then of course all the fruits are gonna drop too, so I've gotta pick them up. Uh, yeah. Papaya that I planted, um, once say last year. Look at them. Yeah. It's gonna be a pretty cool year. And you know what, papayas, they are fine over winter. Over winter. The fruits are fine. Look, I mean, check out the Taiwanese guava. Yeah? So, I mean, I, I can pick them and eat them now, or I can just leave them on a tree and then just, uh, winter time, come and pick them. Now, one of my favorite tree. The ice cream bean tree. There's nothing quite like middle of winter coming out here, picking one of those bean pots and eating the pops in the middle of winter. It's, it, it, it's, it really do, it does. I mean, it, it, it's, it's true to, to the name. I mean, ice cream bean, it, it's nice and cool and it, it's delicious. So let's, uh, let's actually take you to the back. Um, oh, you know what? Speaking of uh, star fruit, see this guy right here? Actually, uh, you might be able to tell from this angle. He is fruiting. See all that cluster of fruits up there? Yeah, this guy for a long time just did nothing. Instead, it was just, uh, growing just because he was a rescue star fruit, but doing phenomenal. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I've gotta, I've gotta take the time to pick these and, and just eat them. Alrighty. So yeah, I mean this is uh, what I mean. It's it, in response to the cooler temperature. Most of the deciduous trees. Um, Andrew pears here, they're starting to lose their leaves in response to the, the fall. But not this guy. Oh yeah, this guy is gonna need a lot of protection, um, wax jambu there. Yeah, I, I mean, I know a lot of you guys probably have a lot of citrus, but um, citrus in the Central Valley, I mean, they, they do great. I mean, all the citrus, I mean, I leave the fruits here, uh, they, they actually taste way better uh, over winter. So, and as you can see, it doesn't take up a whole lot of space. I mean, this is just a little section of my um, side of the house that I've got, and I've got like seven citrus trees in containers, and they're all producing. Oh yeah. So let's see. Oh, wanna see something cool? So, so that was the gigantic softball size Thai grava, okay? Another Taiwanese grava here. Oh yeah, look at that. Yeah, and it's, it's, they're not ripe yet. So just imagine, uh, you know, like January, uh, these will be like humongous. And he's in a container. A bit ugly looking, <clears throat> admittedly, um, but Vietnamese guavas. I gotta pick that yellow one, uh, that looks pretty ripe. But, oh yeah. So, <laughs> even the June plum fruiting in October, yeah. So now, the two jujubes in the front were the deciduous varieties. This is the tropical variety. Look at that, isn't this awesome? I don't even need a lot of just, ooh. Nearly got hit in the head by a falling jujube. Oh yeah, this is a, a tropical jujube. These are like size and apple fruit. Uh, this one isn't quite right, but I find that they don't need to be ripe, it's still very good. So, uh, green thornless jujubes. 
and then of course the um, Hawaiian solo papaya here. Uh, last year, the winter did knock it down, but that's okay because as a result, in response to the tree being knocked down by winter, multiple branches grew out and with each branch, new sets of fruits. So I'm gonna be getting a lot of papaya off of a single tree here. Yeah. Oh, you know what? Look, look at the, the foliage of the manila up there, the mango. Look at that shade of leathery red. That is just awesome. All right, so let's uh, come here a bit and then you get to the bananas. Oh yeah. So <laughs> here's the neat thing, okay. See that set of banana? That I've already chopped off the, the flower section, the blossom. There is another one up there. Check it out. Isn't that awesome? Look at that. So two stalks producing fruits. Oh yeah, and, and with, with bananas, um, yeah, I, I just let them overwinter. They, they, they are great. Uh, let me close this really quick before they escape. Oh boy. And I want to say I did see some Sornam cherries on the tree that are ripening. Oh, you know what? Um, I don't know if you could see, but um, you see all those red fruits hanging up there? Yeah? Sornam cherry. There's a couple out there. You got to take a pick and get them. But yeah, this is what I mean, year-round fruit. In the middle of winter, these guys will still produce fruits. And then, uh, I mean, I just, I, I just can't stress it enough. Papaya, guavas, mangoes, fresh new growth in response to the cooler temperature. And, uh, Etamoya. Uh, I know there's a bunch of fruit on this tree. Oh, well, I guess there's one. Um, I did hand pollinate this just the other day, or actually a few weeks ago. That's one. There's a bunch of them. Um, well, here's another one. The, the problem with Etamoyas is it's green against green foliage. So, um, you know, they, they, the tree likes to hide the fruits pretty well. Yeah, these guys, I, I just leave them on a tree over winter. I mean, I can pick it now. Look, I could pick it now. Uh, it, it'd be a bit too small. I mean, I could pick it now and leave them on the countertop. They will, I mean, they will um, fruit. They will uh, ripen, that is. Oh, boy. Why is one of the, the best tasting uh, fruits. I mean, I gotta start picking these and uh, letting them ripen on the countertop, but yeah, one of the nicest, most tastiest uh, fruits in the world. And then um, citrus, I mean, I, I just can't stress it enough. Great fruits, because, well, I mean, why not? <laughs> yeah, so that's, uh, that's what's ripening like right around this time. And um, yeah, again, I mean, f for the most part, long games. Yeah. Yeah, for the most part, you know, I even though it's like middle of winter, I still come out here and I'm still able to find fresh fruits. Um, yeah, the tree just does a pretty good job of holding onto those fruits. Um, so, I mean, what, what, what else, I mean, what, you really can't get any better than just coming to your yard and just picking out the freshest fruit off of your tree uh, in the middle of winter. Um, but yeah, I mean, besides the tree, 
yeah, just look, just appreciate the foliage of the new growth from some of the tropical fruit trees. Oh yeah. And um, <laughs> there's two things that I'm most excited about this year. And not a straw fruit, okay? Variety unknown. In fact, I'm pretty sure this guy was grown from seed. He was maybe like this tall when I got him several years back. Flowering. So I'm really excited to see what kind of uh, uh, fruit it produces or, or how, tasty it, how, how tasty it is. And then uh, <laughs> another store fruit that um, major setback for several years just because um, a lot of fell on it and we basically pruned it down to here. It was just a piece of stick sticking out of the ground. But it made a really good comeback here, obviously. So pretty excited to see what type of, uh, how tasty the fruits would uh, be. Yeah, so yeah, that's, uh, that's what's happening. That's what's happening right around this time of the year. So, all right, have a good afternoon.